Welcome back to another evening in the planetarium at home with me, Mr. Jason, your planetarium supervisor from the St. Charles Parish Library Planetarium. And tonight, in this episode, we're going to explore a little bit more about the changing faces of the moon, the different phases of the moon. We talked a little bit about the moon in a previous, well, a couple episodes back, but we're going to take a, a more in-depth look at what's happening. Why does the moon seem to change its shape over time. Sometimes we see it's a thin crescent in the sky. Maybe we see it as the sun starts to go down. It's shining as it starts slowly set in the western sky shortly after the sun sets. But more often, we pay attention to the full moon. We talked a little bit about that super moon when the moon is full and happens to be closer in its orbit to the Earth and also those mini-moons or micro-moons when the moon is full but also farther away from the Earth in its orbit. We notice these rising up in the east as the sun sets in the west. And it's often very beautiful. But the moon's not always full. And it's not always rising up as the sun sets. Sometimes it's up there even during the day. In fact, sometimes in the early morning, you might even spot a half-moon on your way to work, or if you're riding the school bus to school, you might spot a half moon up even during the day. So how is it that a big ball, a spheroid of rock in space, like this one, well, my little marble moon's not very good. It's got some dark spots and some light spots, but eh, it's good for showing a scale model here, but how does our moon a big ball of rock in space go from being this to that? Well, to understand it, we kind of have to change our point of view, change our perspective. And we're going to do that by, well, checking out some cool animations from NASA's Scientific Visualization Studio. Here we have, well, it's actually three different animations. I've kind of put them all together in one. In the background, in well, big in the background, are the phases of our moon, the different shapes of the moon. Sometimes crescent, sometimes half, sometimes a full moon, and then it goes back around to where we don't see the moon at all, really. It's a new moon. In front of that, we have our Earth in the center. It's spinning around. It's going around pretty fast because the Earth rotates once every day. The moon is going around it too. It's going around about once well, every month or so. So our Earth spins, it rotates once every day, while the moon revolves around the Earth once every month. The moon's rotating too, but, well, we'll worry about that topic for another time. Down here in the lower half, we see another little tiny Earth on the, well, on your left. And on your right, you see kind of a line with, well, that's actually a little moon. They're pretty small. And I wanted to show you this little moon and little earth because, well, often we see pictures like what we have in the center. Not the full moon in the background or the changing phases, but the earth and the moon going around it in a nice circle, and they're really close together. Well, this isn't really to proper scale. Yes, the earth is in proper scale to the moon. The moon is about one-fourth the size of the earth in the center, but they're not the right distance apart. And that's what we have here in the lower half. On the left, we have our Earth been shrunk down to a little tiny ball, a little tiny circle or disk there. And on the right, we have our moon, which is about, well, one-fourth the size of our Earth. And you'll notice that they're really far away from each other. The moon is really far away, about 240,000 miles, in fact. That's really, really far away. So far away that about 30 Earths can fit in between our Earth and our Moon, lined up edge to edge, touching each other, that fill up the space. But we have this line here, and this line is showing us that the Moon is not always one certain distance away. That 240,000 miles is an average. Sometimes the Moon's a little bit closer, like when it's on the left side of that little yellow line. Sometimes it's a little bit further away, like on that right side of that yellow line. But on average, 
It's about 30 Earths away. Crazy. The Earth is really, really far away. And so we have a scale model here on bottom. But we're noticing as our, well, moon orbits around the Earth, our Earth and our moon are always, well, they're lit up half. Because their light comes from the sun. And yes, the, this is actually showing the animation of the Earth going around the sun. We're kind of flying with it. And as it goes around the sun, of course, our half that gets lit up slightly rotates as the Earth is revolving around our star, the sun, once every year. But we're going to stop that. We're going to change things up. We're going to get rid of our cool giant moon in the background, even though I do think that's rather pretty. And we're going to go here. We've stopped our Earth. In fact, we've stopped the moon. Here we have half the Earth lit up in the center. The moon's going around it, and it's half lit up as well. And coming from the right are rays of sunlight. The sun is way far away. Really far away. 93 million miles away. And the rays are lighter coming from, well, for me. It's like I'm glowing, lighting up the Earth here. But we're going to start the motion of this. We're going to have the moon orbiting around the Earth. And this is not so scale model, but it gets us to where we need to go. It helps us to visualize what's happening with the phases. As our moon moves around, eventually it passes between the Earth and the Sun. Sometimes it even goes in front of the Sun. We call those eclipses, but again, another topic for another day. When the moon goes between the Earth and the Sun, but it doesn't cover up the Sun, well, that's what we call a new moon. That's what we call that phase. And in fact, we really can't see the moon. The lit up side, the half that's lit up from the Sun, is complete, completely facing away from us. So we see the dark side. But there is no true permanent dark side of the moon because the moon goes through a day and night cycle just like the Earth. It just takes about a month. As the moon continues around, we start to see more of our moon from Earth, from our point of view. Still half is lit up. It's still a big ball and it's still half lit up. But we see a little bit more of that lit up side and a little less of the dark side. As it keeps going, eventually we see half of it lit up and half in dark. We see a little bit more. We call that a gibbish shape. And we have a full moon. And it starts to shrink away. As the moon moves around the Earth, it slowly wanes or shrinks from our point of view. And we see less and less the lit up side as, again, it's moving around to be in front. Well, not in front, but between the Earth and the Sun. And this happens every month. And we go through cycles. We have the new moon. Then we start to see a little crescent, a little bit of that lit up side, the waxing crescent. Then we have our half moon or first quarter phase, a waxing half moon first quarter because it's a quarter of the way around the Earth. Then we have our waxing gibbous. Waxing means it's getting bigger. It's becoming more full. Soon we'll have a full moon that will rise in the east as the sun is setting in the west. And then after that, we start to see the sun staying out, well, even into the morning. As the, well, not the sun, the moon stays out even to the morning. The sun's coming up and our moon stays up too. We start to see a waxing, no, sorry, not waxing, the opposite. It's waning, shrinking away. We start to see a waning gibbous, and of course, a third quarter phase, and of course, a, well, a waning crescent. We get to see all of these, and you can too. Just go out and look up. Sometimes you'll see a full moon, Sometimes you might see a thin crescent moon in the early evening or a half moon that is big and high up in the sky as the sun starts to go down. Maybe in the morning you're driving. Well, you might look up in the sky and see a third quarter or a waning half moon or maybe a thin waning crescent moon that's about to move between the earth and the sun and become a new moon. Go out and observe. You can track the changing shapes of the moon yourself. You can go out night after night and do a little sketch of what you see. You might have to start waking up earlier in the morning to see what the moon looks like. Or go out really late or sit up really late, but I don't recommend that. And of course, during a new moon, it's up with the sun. Don't look at the moon during a new moon phase because you'll be looking towards the sun and that's really bright. It'll hurt your eyes. 
We need special, well, special glasses. Not sunglasses. Those aren't special enough. We need really special equipment to observe the sun safely and not hurt our eyes, even during eclipses. But we can always learn more about that in a later time. And, of course, I really do hope to see you again underneath our planetarium dome real soon. And we will. Things are starting to open up again, but we're still trying to be safe. We don't want anyone to get sick. But until we're back under the planetarium dome, go out, look up, and explore our universe. I'm Jason Talley with the St. Charles Parish Library Planetarium. Thanks again for watching.